Imagine that you have a chart like this and want to compute the slope for each of those trend lines. So what you do is you take your data, create an empty vector for the slopes of your continents and then run a for loop for each continent where you'd filter the data, call the LM function with this filtered data and extract the slope from this linear model. Nice. Now you have a vector full of slopes. A nicer way to do this is to use function instead of for loops. Here's how that works. First, you create a data set that has all the data in it. In that table, you can compute the linear model for each continent. Then you can extract all of the coefficients first and then the slope. This way you will have all of your information in one place and can reuse it if you want later on. So let's talk about implementing this. First you group your data and call the nest function. Because you don't need the grouping anymore you get rid of it. Next you take your nested data and pass it to mutate to compute new columns. Here is where you use the map function to calculate the linear models. This map function takes a list or vector as the first argument, in our case that's the data column from our nested data. And and as the second argument map takes a function. What this does is that it applies the function to each entry of the specified list, just like a for loop. Then in the second step we can repeat this and compute the model's coefficients by calling map and using the linear models in the coefficients function. Now in each cell of our new column there is a two-dimensional vector. We can extract the slope by extracting the second element of those vectors with map and a function that extracts a vector's second component. And because extracting a single entry is quite common, Map even has a shorthand for that so that we only need to specify the component's number. Notice that we have used map double because map always returns a list as you've seen in the previous columns. If we want to return a specific vector instead of a general list, we use one of the versions of map. And all of these functions only work if your function returns only a single value. You can also use map outside of mutate. You can even chain multiple map calls. And if you wrap your code logic into functions with meaningful names, this can make for a highly readable code. If you want to iterate over more than one argument, you can use map2. And for more than two arguments, you use pmap. So that's how the map functions work. Let me know if you like this video by hitting the like button. Thanks for watching and see you next time.